Well, actually, we're just going to keep on keeping our eyes on Jesus. Wasn't that the last worship song? Turn our eyes to him. Well, let's keep let's keep keep doing that. So bless you. I see the work of your hand, galaxy spinning, a heavenly dance. Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming. And I hear the sound of your voice, all at once it's a gentle and thundering noise. Oh God. All that you are, you so overwhelm me. And I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. And God, I run into your arms, unashamed because of mercy. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. I know the power of your cross. Forgiven and free, forever you be my God. And all that you are, you so overwhelm me. I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you and God I run into your arms unashamed because of mercy I'm overwhelmed I'm overwhelmed by you is he beautiful you are beautiful, you are beautiful, oh God, there is no one more beautiful, you are beautiful, God, you are the most beautiful. You are wonderful, you are wonderful, oh God, there is no one more wonderful. You are wonderful, God, you are the most wonderful. You are glorious, you are glorious, oh God, there is no one more glorious. You are glorious, God, you are the most glorious. I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. And God, I run into your arms, unashamed because of mercy. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you, by you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blood of Jesus. I'm overwhelmed. Amen. Yes, Lord. Isn't it awesome to 
to come together and looking at him, turning to him together. It's just not about me turning to Jesus, turning my eyes to him. It's about all of us doing it. And I love it. Just like when I'm in a sports world assembly, I, I, I share about me. I, sh I share, my name is Lee Roussan. I'm, I'm from Greensville, North Carolina. Um, was growing up in New York. My father was a bodyguard for Malcolm X. I was in the Audubon ballroom when he was assassinated. I was two years old, sitting in the audience, just like you guys are sitting here right there, right now. And, and um, he came out to give a speech. He was going to give a talk that he never gave before. He was going to talk about unity. His speech was, was going to go like this. There's a reason why all of us are here together today. doesn't matter whether you're red, yellow, black, or white. It's time for all of us to come together in a certain kind of unity. He never gave that talk. He never gave that speech. Because there was a, a, a distraction in the audience. Somebody said, take your hand out of my pocket. He was assassinated. That night, the FBI comes to my father, Cecil. We know you haven't done anything wrong, but if you don't leave New York City right now, you will be investigated, and there's no telling what's going to happen to you or to your family. And that same hour, my father gets his family, family, and we moved to Greensboro, North Carolina. And that's where I grew up. I was one of the top five running backs in America being recruited. Offered student athletic scholarship, Southern Cal, Colorado, Notre Dame, Pitt, North Carolina, all the schools. I chose the University of Colorado. February the 13th, I signed my name on the contract, Lee Roussan. I was fired up. I was like, I'm going to Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get a bull ring on my finger. I'm going to become the Heisman Trophy winner, All-American. I mean, I was so excited about my future. That was February the 13th. On February the 16th, on ABC, CBS, and NBC, the headline story read like this. The University of Colorado has been put on probation. It's like when any of us realize we all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Well, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, but I, have, I got to face the consequences of choices that people made that came before me. That's what all of us deal with. Because of what Adam and Eve did. We inherited it. And I got, I, if you look at my fat nose, I got that from my mama. And I got my high behind from my dad. We got sin from Adam and Eve. But I praise God. That he, he has a vision greater than our choices. I'm with the Colorado. Before, excited about the American dream, but now I knew that I was going to experience the American nightmare. But I faced the consequence. I didn't give up. And I was drafted by the football giants. Any giant fans in here? <laughs> Any Jesus fans? Yeah, baby, that's all. all right. Here we go. <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling you, uh, what a struggle that was. I, I, I mean, when I was drafted in 1985, uh, they cut the roster from 49 men to 45 men. There was a war going on between the players and the, and the owners, and, and I didn't even have a chance to make it. But by the grace of God, I made it. And that's another story. I'll tell you guys some of those stories another time. But I had an awesome career with the New York football giants. Um, as you can see, two Super Bowl rings. And when I, when I speak in my assembly, the kids, they love it. I go, they, some of them go, Mr. Roussan, since you got two of those rings, can I have one? <laughs> and I go, no. Go get your own. And if you want to know how to, do, how to get it, I'm going to tell you right now. Listen, you see, you see this bling bling? What you got to do is you got to go behind the bling bling to the real bling bling. Then you can bling bling. Bling bling. <laughs> In other words, you got to go behind what you see. You got to go behind the diamonds, the ice. You call it ice. You got to go behind the gold. You got to go behind what you see to what you can't see. See, you can't see the blood, sweat, and tears. You can't see when I got up at 5 o'clock every morning when I was in high school and ran five miles with my father. You don't see all the sacrifices I made. 
When all my other friends was hanging out, partying and doing all kinds of stuff, I didn't do that. Because I had something on my mind. I'm going to the NFL. I'm going to buy my mom a house. I'm going to get my mother out of the place where she's living. I'm going to take care of her. So you got to go behind what you see to what you can't see so that you can see what's waiting for you. But if you caught up in what other people have, you'll never see what's waiting for you. Then other people are going to get your stuff. So if you want a bling bling like this, like I said, you got to go behind the bling bling to the real bling bling so you can bling bling. Bling bling. The NFL stands for the National Football League. Does everybody agree with that? But it also stands for not for long. When I was introduced to you, you were told that I played for the Cleveland Browns one season, New York Football Giants six seasons, and then after those seven years, the NFL stood for not for long. But by the Again, the all-out mercy and grace of God. God called me to himself. In 1994, I surrendered my life to Christ. And he was so aggressive with me, he connected me with this organization, Sports World, immediately, just a few months later. One of my former coaches who, who, who coached me at the University of Colorado had become the director for Sports World. And he called me on the phone. He said, Lee, we're going to be in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I just want you to come and meet everybody, and I want everybody to meet you because I heard, you know, that, that there's been some changes in your life. I'm like, you go, God. Only God does that kind of stuff right there because I'm telling, I'm telling you right now. So I joined Sports World, and... And I was in training. I, that's the one thing I love about you guys at CEF. You guys are all about training. You're all about training camp, you know, getting prepared for the game, and you're ready. I, I just love that. Can I just do something with you guys? Because I, I just feel like I'm in a huddle right now. I just want to just call the play, right? And I'm going to say, are you ready? And I want I everybody just to go, break, just like that. Just with one clap, and from deep in your heart, out of your chest, out your mouth, I want you to say, break. Can we just do that together? I just can't help it. That's, that's the only thing that I miss from football, from the NFL. <laughs> it's, that, it's that moment in the huddle when the quarterback calls the play. Like my, my vanilla brother, Phil Sims. You, you guys didn't get that, huh? See, the kids get that. When I go into the schools, I'll be like, look at all the vanilla and the chocolate and the cappuccino and the honey and the butter pecan flavors up in here. The kids love it. Because I'm not saying look at all the black people, the white people, the Asian, the Hispanic people, the people who play sports, people who can't play sports, the, the fat people, the skinny people. I'm not doing that. I'm recognizing the flavor, how, how God made us all different for us to appreciate our differences. Okay, so listen, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to call the play. And I want you to, when I say, are you ready? And I just want one sound on. It can't be like break, break, clap, clap, clap. It gotta be like break. Isn't, isn't this a fellowship? Isn't it? Isn't this a fellowship? Okay, that, that's, that's what goes on. It's a sound of unity, a sound of agreement. The root word for koinia, koi, means a sound of agreement. When we, when we make a sound of agreement, when we koi, God shows up, and he begins to move in and through us. So you guys ready? Here we go. Love one another on two. Love one another on two. Are you ready? That's pretty good. <laughs> what do you think, Daddy? Wow. That's amazing. I'm telling you, in most groups, you hear like a clap, clap, and a clap, clap, clap. I'm not surprised. All the, the couple of days I've been here, I know God is here. I know he's in your hearts, in your lives, in your work. No matter what role you play, he's in you. I, I miss that. But I thank God now that the NFL stands for newfound life. You can tap on that. All right, there you go. 
I got a newfound life in Christ. And when God put my talk together for Sports World, I want you guys to imagine just for a minute, you, you in a Sports World assembly, and when I go in, I, I go, listen, I got, a, I, got a, I got a present for everybody here. And everybody gets all happy, get happy. Because they think I'm some NFL player and I got like 10 transfer trucks outside with all kinds of presents and gifts wrapped up. And after I finish running my mouth, we're going to bust up out of here and go get our presents. And I go, no, it's not like that. And they go, ah. They go, ah. Yeah, this, this present that I have today is it's wrapped up in three words. The only way that you can open it up is with the ear of your heart. Oh, you don't, you don't believe there's an ear in your heart? Let me, let me, let me prove it to you. Just, let me just spell the word heart. Look, H. E A R T. See the ear? And there's another word in the heart too. Hear. When we learn, everybody say learn, how to hear with the ear of our heart what he says, we can art. That's the last word, art. We know how to act. We know how to respond. Believe it or not, one of my coaches, you guys may know him, Bill Belichick. He told me one day, he said, Lee, do not react in effect to what's acted at you, but respond with what's already in you. Anybody hearing that? How, how many of us react to when people look at us the wrong way or say something? We, we, we like... This man says, do not react in effect to what's acted at you, but respond with what's already in you. In other words, be ready. That's why we practice. That's why we train. We train. We get ready. So that no matter what happens, good, bad, right, wrong, happy, sad, difficult, easy, we're going to respond. We're not going to react. How reactive is the world right now? So many people are just so reactionary. But those of us who have the power and the authority of God in us, we respond with that. We respond with what's in us. So I love having the opportunity to challenge the youth and, and the teachers and every, everybody who hears this talk, you know, who are you? It's a present. The only way that you can open it up is with the ear of your heart. You hear it. Isn't that what the word of God says? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of truth. The message of truth. So when you hear who you are, then you're going to know. So many kids say, Mr. Wusson, how do, you, how do I know who I am? I say, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear the truth. They think I'm going to tell them how to be a football player. Or how to, how to be famous. How to be rich. I tell them, I say, listen, none of those things are who I am. People get mad at me when, when they hear my testimony sometimes. They, they go, I heard Lee Wusson say he wasn't black. He said he was a child of God. And I go, I didn't say that. I said a black or, 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 or African-American or a football player or my name, Lee Rousan, those areas, they're, they're not the foundation of my identity. It's not the power source that I'm plugged into every day. It's, it's, again, it's not the basis that I, that, that I stand upon to construct my mind and my life. It's a part of who I am. Yes, I'm chocolate, African-American. I used to be a football player. They call us legends now. They don't call us former football players. They call us legends, so I'm a legend. <laughs> it's a part of who I am. But who am I, really? I am a child of the king. I was, I was going on the, on the airplane, um, flying to Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm walking right through first class, and there was a, a lady sitting right here in first class. And she must have seen one of my Super Bowl rings. They must have went bling, bling to her, right? So she shouts out in front of the whole airplane. She goes, who are you? And everybody on the airplane goes, oh, nosy. 
So I, I put my bag down. I go, ma'am, I am a child of the king. I'm not talking about Elvis, Michael Jackson, or LeBron James. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I praise the Lord that he's given me the opportunity to be like all of you CEF workers. Teaching and sharing the greatest gift who we truly are, our true identity through the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited and so fired up. I'm, I'm, I'm a little mad too because I was, I was telling my brother Mark back here who, who, who reminds me of one of my teammates. You guys know Mark, right? Mark here, Mark Johnson, MJ. MJ reminds me of one of my boys, Jim Burt. He was he, Jim. Jim Burt was just this this Noah's God. He was this vanilla brother from who who grew up with all these chocolate brothers and sisters in the ghetto in Buffalo, right? He went to University of Miami, and he played with me with the New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. But he's one of my close friends. He loves the Lord. It's amazing how many how many guys have come to Jesus. And I just, I just, I just, 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 I'm just reminded again, as I've been praying and and the Lord is saying, Lee, I've been answering your prayers because I've been praying for God to hook me up with my teammates. Because I I told you guys earlier, I I missed the huddle. I I, I don't, the NFL, again, again, not for long. That that time is gone. But I got a newfound life and look at all my new teammates here. And those who were tuned in, all of y'all, I'm so excited. We got to be focused. We got to be in that flow of living that life for Christ. All of us. No matter what's going on around us. No matter what quarter it is in the game. No matter what time, no matter what it looks like. I'm so fired up right now to have the opportunity to speak in elementary schools along with you. I'm telling you, one of the biggest things that we, that that our concerns with sports world has been how how to hand over the baton, right? After we come in and speak and, and and, and give inspiration, I'm telling you, kids, they hear you. When you come from your heart, they hear you. You're not just giving them words. It's the love of God just coming out of you into their lives. They hear it. They hear it. They might not really know what it is, but they hear it. So we've always desired to partner with local churches, other organizations in those communities so we can pass the baton and keep it going. So I'm, I'm excited to, to have the opportunity to speak in elementary schools. I'm, I'm excited. I love speaking to young kids. I'm telling you right now. The young kids, they'd be like, Mr. Rusan, we heard about you. Can, you. can you talk about the Lion King? And the teacher be like, how do, you, how, do you, how do you make the Lion King the gospel? I'm like, God is awesome, isn't he? I'm excited about inviting, after my talk, inviting those young kids in elementary schools to come and join me at a good news club meeting after, after my talk. And some of those who, who, who may have decided, I want, I, I want to decide who I really am. It's already, they, they want to do it. It's already in their heart and mind right now. So I want to invite them to a to a good news club meeting. As we know, as you guys already know, it's, that may be the only church they're ever going to go to. You guys know that. I'm not telling you something you don't know. It, and it's maybe the only opportunity, you know, for them to have a regular type of discipleship. 
for them to learn Christ, to learn who they are. Because once you decide who you are, then you got to become it. That's one of the problems, I believe, with, with Christendom, with people who say they, they're Christians and love Jesus. They go, I'm a Christian. I know who I am. I'm a Christian. But, but they're not be, becoming one every day. I call it the convergence of the noun of who we are and the verb of who we are. Once you decide the noun, the person, Christ, the place, your, your, your mind, your heart, the thing, your character, that must converge with the verb. Now act like it. Become it every day. And kids are ready to hear that. They're, they're ready to converge those areas in their life. They're ready to converge the, the gifts, the, 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 the talent, the, the, the abilities that God has given them with their passions. That, that convergence right there determines a purpose-driven life. Young kids are ready to learn, to learn how to have a purpose-driven life right now. So I'm excited about that opportunity. I'm excited about the opportunity when I go into high schools to partner and, and to invite and encourage these high school kids to come to the Christian Youth in Action Clubs so, they can, so we, they can train, they can learn God's Word. And so and they're at that age right now that they can learn the Word. They can, they can start hearing it and start seeing what God is saying to them. A lot of times I ask kids, I said, I said um, do you, uh, you, how, if you look at, how, how was the image produced at the bottom of a dark sea of the Titanic? Was it taken by a camera? They go, no. I go, that's right. It was produced by sound waves. So the image was produced by sound waves. Again, it goes right back to what I said earlier. Faith comes by hearing. So when these young high school kids, when they hear in training and working out the word of God, they're going to start seeing his heart. They're going to start seeing the image that God wants them to see according to whatever measure of faith for that particular child, that, that particular young person. The opportunity for them to learn friendship, identifying in mind, heart, and spirit, and that, and that friendship starts with Christ. Then, it can, it can begin to spread with other like-minded teams. Isn't that amazing? For them to learn friendship and to learn how to be leaders. I'm excited about that. I wish I would have been a part of a good news club uh, when I was little. The only thing close to, that, that I came to that was just when I was in, I went to my grandmama's house when I was in the third grade, and this, this little girl named Karen, she said, are you saved? And I was like, am I what? And then she kissed me. <laughs> and I was thinking, I want to be saved. They had no idea what it was. I was raised Catholic. I was, I was raised Catholic. My, my father married a, a Baptist girl from the North, North Carolina, my mama, um, Shirley, Shirley. And then, and then he, he had, he had, he was, my father was a brilliant dude. He, he, he had um, convinced all his family members to, to, be, to um, practice Catholicism because he said that the Catholic people cared about black people more than Christians did. My father went to, to my mama's dad and said, listen, um, you know, I'm, I'm the man, so I'm, we're, gonna we're gonna become Catholic. Never went to one mass. The only time I saw my dad in the church is when I asked him to be the best man in my wedding. And then my father converted to Judaism when he, after he divorced my mother and he married a Jewish woman. 
he really, really struggled. I wish I would have been in a good news club when I was little or a CYIA club in high school. I wasn't saved until my freshman year at the University of Colorado. And, and when I heard the gospel message from this old Mexican dude who told me the message, and, and I was like, well, I want Jesus. And, 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 I, and I said the sinner's prayer, but when I, when I got up to saying the sinner's prayer, I had no discipleship at all. As a matter of fact, I became worse. And how I, I look back at my life, I, that, I, was, I went to school in the University of Colorado in Boulder. After school was over, I went to Colorado Springs for a couple of days with my friend. And his, and his father shared the gospel, gospel message with me. Then I went back to Boulder for the summertime. I started doing things I never did before in my life. Hanging out with all the other guys and that life in Boulder, Colorado. But I praise God. Again, he had a greater vision for my life. And when I surrendered my life in 1994, everything changed. So I commend all of you CEF workers and, and as far as I'm concerned, my new teammates. Continue in prayer. That was my word this morning. That's the first word I read this morning. Rejoice and continue in prayer. Continue the work of Christ. Sharing and teaching the gospel. Keep it going. Okay, guys, my, my time is up. So, listen. Again, I can't help one more time. That break was so good, we're going to do it one more time. We're going to do it. Here we go. Here we go. Huddle up now. Get ready. Get ready. Put them pins down and stuff down. You got to put the, get your legs down, man. Come on. Get ready, man. When you huddle, you got to be like this. You got to be ready, man. We got to move the chains. Everybody say move the chains. That's right. We got to move forward heavenward for God. So here we go. Stop worrying about everything. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness on one. Stop worrying about everything. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness on one. Are you ready? <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs>Thank you, Lee. Wasn't that tremendous? And thank you guys. We love your team. What a blessing that is. Uh, we had some time together the other night, and uh, we got uh, what, a couple hours together and talked scripture most of that time. And I can tell you these guys are a kindred spirit with us. And we just had a joyful time just talking about our Lord and good to talk with Lee and get to know him. We didn't even talk football until we got in the car on the way home. Remember that, Lee? <laughs> I asked him what he thought of Tom Brady, and that was, just went off from there. <laughs> but it's good having you guys here. And what I'd like to do right now is just share a little family business with you right now. And we don't mind you being here for the family discussion, so just uh, relax. But I want to share some family business. In a senior staff meeting we had a week or so ago, we realized it's been an awful long time since we've given you a financial update. And so we thought it was mentioned in that meeting that we ought to do that. So we planned this is the first chapel service we've had since we were together and discussed that. So I want to give you that report right now, and it is good news. So I want to share good news with you, so I hope it will encourage you. Before I do that and before I forget, uh, the first half of this service I missed because I was up doing a live Zoom with our workers in Great Britain, and all of them made certain that I promised that when I came down here, they knew I was missing the first half of chapel. And they, the workers of Great Britain wanted to give their greetings to you today. They're in conference right now. And that conference, it was, I started at 8 o'clock this morning with them. And it is now, it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon for them. Uh, but they're having a great time together. And we had a wonderful time in the Word this morning uh, together. So uh, they want to give their greetings. Now, let's go back to the uh, family report, the good news I want to share with you. So I wrote down some statistics here. I talked to her with Peggy the other day to be sure that I'm stating everything accurately. And so here's a little report financially. Going back to the background, you know that for years we've had a line of credit available to us when we need 
to borrow resources. And you know that during some of the months of the year, we have peaks and we have valleys. And the line of credit has always been to get us through the valleys. But I want to report to you today that the last time we borrowed from our line of credit was August of 19, or 2016. So it's been almost five years since we borrowed any resources. That's a wonderful blessing. Then, more than that, uh, on February 9th, just this month, February 9th, we paid off the line of credit as full amount, which is the first time we've done that in a while. And so I can tell you right now that CEF is debt-free. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> we also find ourselves at this current moment in a strong financial cash position, which is something we've never said in this room before, but a strong financial cash position. I also want to tell you that we have what we call the Jason months. How many of you know about the Jason months? Lots of hands. Jason months are, what are they? Tell us. Somebody tell me. <laughs> those are the Jason months. And those are the months when our resources seem to dip down and it becomes very, very difficult uh, financially to meet all those obligations we have all over the world. So as a result of that, I want to just say this year, the COVID year of all times, we never even hardly noticed the Jason months. Never a time of concern. We didn't feel that pressure that oftentimes you feel and that weight you feel upon you and wondering how things are going to work out. And so not only did we not have to borrow, but we did not even feel those months this year as we went through them. And then I want to tell you, we were able to set up operating reserves at the end of 2019, going into 2020, and, but we've never had to use even our internal reserves, which is another blessing that we have found. And then our annuity reserves are at full force with Barnabas, the one that organizes that force, and we have an abundant resource there beyond what's required on our annuities, which, again, is another first and another blessing for us. Then I want to tell you that 2020, we have clo closing out. Peggy and her team are working on closing that year out right now, and we think we have the numbers, but they have to go through the audit. And the audit won't be performed for a while yet. The auditors are already started, but they're not finished because, as you know, we have a full-blown audit every year. And that audit, when we get the results, that will announce those numbers. But we look at them. We have an idea what they are, and we're very, very encouraged by that. And we'll look forward to the day we can share exactly what those numbers are with you. Now, one more thing I want to share with you. That's kind of a financial overall. But there's something else, another blessing I want to share with you. You know that uh, during our World Day of Prayer, we have what we call uh, uh, many things we pray for and all the prayer walks we do and the different ways we offer prayer, the big maps we put out here in the world and pray for the nations, and all those things we do. In those things, if you recall, we always have the get out of the boat request. And the get out of the boat request, sometimes it's a boat we put out here, sometimes a crest or put a different place where you can find one. And I want to just tell you what happened. My, this happens to be my get out of the boat request. This is the exact piece of paper and the, this year, they happened to be on a table outside the auditorium here. When I walked out, I thought, oh, I don't have my get-out-of-the-boat request. So I reached over and grabbed this off the table without looking at them, just picked one at random off the table. And this is my get-out-of-the-boat request. We're going to show it to you on the screen here. Uh, there it is. There's the boat. And here's the request. Pray for the ability to increase our digital presence on the field by 100%. And this cost $500,000. Those are our estimated costs. Now, you know the world has changed so radically and is continuing to change, and we know that we have to increase our, we call it, here's the official title now uh, that Ron looked up, worked out for us. It's called Digital Content Platform, if you want to get technical. That's the digital content platform that we want to double our capacity in the next, this year, before year 2021 ends. And so we put that as a get out of the boat request. This is beyond budget, beyond all the other expense we have. We just need an extra half a million bucks to be able to set this up. And that is a get out of the boat request. And so we asked for this. And I want you to know that uh, God answered that prayer. And many of you in those departments know we're already ordering new equipment. We're doing different things to uh, bring. And we will ha this will include in different people we bring into the organization with technical abilities. And all that area is being expanded right now. And I'm excited about that. That's phase one of this program. We have another phase we're praying for, and I'm confident God's going to provide. That's phase two. We want to build new studios for where we do all of our video productions. And we have a plan right in this area where we're going to build new facilities, new, new uh, 
rooms by God's grace and God's will. We hope to do that. Then we would digit our capability and then put it into new studios. That would be phase two. But phase one is already fully funded, and we're praying for phase two. And then there's a phase three. We'll talk about that some other time. But God has blessed us, and we're seeing these things take place. And so reserves for all these different projects are put in there. We call them buckets or anything you want to call them. So those reserves are available when needed. So God has blessed us. I don't ever remember a time when we've seen this kind of blessing. Now, let me say I firmly believe, and you know I teach, that we should pray for our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. It's in the model prayer that Christ gave both in Matthew and in the book of Luke when he said this is how we ought to pray. It shows your total dependency upon God, not upon your strategies, not upon man, not upon a major donor. Your strategy, your source is God. God is our source. And so I believe we should pray that way, but it's also to the glory of God to ask for special things. And that's what we do when we talk about get out of the boat request. So if you think back to the get out of the boat request you have, there were several different ones that were beyond the norm, asking God for extra things. Uh, what are those requests? Do you remember what you got when you picked one up? I hope you do. And you ought to keep it in your Bible or keep it in your desk or someplace close by where you continue to pray for whatever it is you have. Because we have seen over the years hundreds, well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but dozens of get out of the boat requests fully met when God's people seriously take these things before God. Now, what's this all about? It's about the glory of God. When God does something like this, you just stand in awe, and it humbles you. It humbles you. You realize God does things that no man can do, and, and it draws us closer to the mighty God that we serve. So isn't that a wonderful blessing? Don't you think it's good to see God work like this? Let, let me just close our time together in a word of prayer, and then I would like us to sing the doxology and just give praise to God for his goodness to us so let's, I'll have a word of prayer now, and then who's going to lead us off on that? It's not going to be me. Okay, Paul, you lead us off in the doxology at the end of this prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Our Father, we are so humbled to come into your presence in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and recognize, Father, how you care for us. Your thoughts toward us, your deeds toward us, your works toward us are innumerable. And you watch for us, and you long for us to come closer to you. You long to have greater fellowship with us. And, Father, at times, in answer to our feeble prayers, you, you, you pour out your blessings upon us. And so, Father, we are praising you now for having done that for us and to us. And what a pleasure it is, Father, to have this type of blessing poured upon us and the encouragement we get from it and then the advancements we can make in ministry. Father, we thank you as our God, our Father, our provider, our source for everything. We praise your name. We are humbled by your goodness to us. And we realize, Father, how badly we depend upon you, how much we need you. And, Father, we know that if we have you, we need nothing else. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.